According to Dr. Jun Kunisawa, there is a bacterial relay taking place in our gut. The missing link in your gut health. Why fiber alone isn't enough? The natural connection. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachak Takamiya, the Natto King. I am the author of Natto Unleashed and the Ikigai Diet. Now, we've been told fiber is good for us, and fiber is great for gut microbiome. But do you know why it is good for gut microbiome? What does it do? Well, one of the function or one of the benefit of eating fiber is gut bacteria convert fiber into short chain fatty acid. And short chain fatty acid do all kinds of amazing work in our gut. So we need short chain fatty acid. But to do that, fiber alone cannot do the work. We need a specific gut bacteria. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So please watch the video until the end. Now, uh, I have been talking about the longevity bacteria discovered in Japanese centurion. So in the first video, which is called, what is the longevity bacteria discovered in the Japanese centurion, the Kyotango study explained. I talked about the Kyotango region in Japan and Kyotango Longevity Cohort Research because Kyotango is famous for having three times as many centenarians as the national average. And in this research, the researchers discovered that a longevity bacteria, which is butyrate producing bacteria, is abundant in the gut of the senior citizens in the Kyotango region. And in the second video, which is called How to Increase the Longevity Bacteria Found in Japanese Centurions, I talked about what kind of food you can eat to increase butyrate producing bacteria. And one of the things are bacteria, bifidobacteria, lactic acid bacteria, and natto bacteria. Their interplay is significant for helping butyrate producing bacteria to produce butyrate. But at that time, I didn't understand the process myself well. I just learned that thing at that time and I was just sharing it without really fully understanding the process. But now I understand it a lot more. It's basically every single day I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm, my knowledge is increasing. And especially now, I discovered this new book, which is called 9,000人を調べて分かった超のすごい世界. The English translation is something like The Amazing World of the Gut, discovered through research on 9,000 people. The book was written by Dr. Jun Kunisawa, who is a deputy director general at National Institute of Biomedical Innovation, Health and Nutrition, and director of Health and Medical Microbiome Research Center. So according to Dr. Jun Kunisawa, there is a bacterial relay taking place in our gut. So, and in this relay, uh, there is the first runner and the second runner, and the third runner. The first runner are uh, sacrificing bacteria. And natto bacteria is a well-known sacrificing bacteria. And the second runner, lactic acid bacteria and bifidobacteria, those are common in you know food like yogurt, kimchi, sauerkraut, and so on. It's very familiar bacteria. And then the third runner are uh, propionic acid bacteria and butyrate producing bacteria. You know about butyrate producing bacteria, right? I've been talking about it a lot in the last few videos. Okay, so you need all those bacteria to complete this relay. In the context of producing butyrate, we need sacrificing bacteria, 
bifidobacteria and butyrate producing bacteria. Okay, so first you eat food and then you have fiber and oligosaccharides. Okay, and then saccharifying bacteria, for example, natto bacteria, convert it into sugar. And then using this sugar, lactic acid bacteria produce lactic acid. And then bifidobacteria produce acetic acid. Okay, and then using the acetic acid, butyrate producing bacteria produce butyrate. And then propionic acid bacteria produces propionic acid using the lactic acid. And so lactic acid bacteria and bifidobacteria can convert fiber and oligosaccharides into these acids, but they're not good at doing them. It's not easy for them to do. So natto bacteria makes it so much easier for them to produce lactic acid and acetic acid. Therefore, natto bacteria is critical in this relay. So, uh, propionic acid, acetic acid, and butyrate are the short chain fatty acid that I've been talking about. So, the bottom line first, you need to consume fiber, especially highly fermentable fiber and oligosaccharides. Okay, so we've already talked about fiber and the you know, type of food that contain fiber, but what about oligosaccharides? What kind of food contains oligosaccharides? Well, foods like onions, bananas, and soybeans. Soybeans, yes. So that means natto contains oligosaccharides. Remember, natto contains fiber. Natto contains highly fermentable fiber as well. Okay, so uh, the bottom line is eating magoa yasa si koku, which means beans, nuts and seeds, seaweeds, vegetables, fish, mushrooms, tubers, whole grains, and fruit. Except, except for fish, they all contain fiber, and many of them contain highly fermentable fiber. But in this case, you don't need to worry too much about, you know, fermentable fiber or not, just eat any kind of fiber. Highly fermentable fiber, often soluble fiber, but insoluble fiber is critical too. So you don't need to worry too much about that distinction, but eat magoa yasashi koku. And fish doesn't contain fiber, but fish has omega-3 fatty acid. And that is critical for your gut health. So just eat magoa yasashi koku, and many of them contain oligosaccharides as well. Okay, and and you need bacteria, you need bifidobacteria. Well, for the case of butyrate, you don't technically need lactic acid bacteria, but for the propionic acid, you need lactic acid bacteria. Um, and then natto bacteria. And natto also contains vitamin B1, which is important for butyrate producing bacteria. In I think I talked about it in other video. Uh, butyrate producing bacteria need vitamin B1 and natto contains it. Therefore, natto contains highly fermentable fiber, oligosaccharides, and vitamin B1 and natto bacteria. It's a complete food. Okay, so the bottom line, you need all those bacteria. So you can have maybe yogurt and natto or kimchi and natto but not yogurt and kimchi. I mean, you know, you can eat them. I mean, they're, they're both good for you, but in the context of this relay, uh, it doesn't help. You need natto bacteria. You need yogurt and natto or kimchi and natto. Therefore, my breakfast, which is natto salad and yogurt muesli, is a fantastic combination. And this Breakfast is great for bones as well. For details, please watch my other video. It's called, Should You Eat Breakfast After Morning Workouts? My 21% bone mass increase at 62. 
the bottom line, eat natto. Natto is an incredible dish. It has oligosaccharides, highly fermentable fiber, vitamin B1, and natto bacteria, plus many other health benefits that I didn't talk about today, but I often talk about in other videos. And you know what? July 10th is natto day. So in Japanese, July is nanagatsu, and 10th is toka, so nanato, sounds like natto, so it is natto day. Therefore, you can start eating natto on July 10th. For the details about natto's health benefits, please read Natto Unleashed. And you probably don't know how to eat natto. So the book contains a lot of recipes, many Japanese recipes and Western recipes. You, yes, you can use natto for Western dishes such as spaghetti, pizza, a curry, uh, even hamburgers. And the book contains information about where to buy natto, DIY natto, navigating natto's taste, and natto hacking. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya, the author of Natto Unleashed and the Ikigai Diet. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. Do you eat natto and yogurt? Or do you eat natto and kimchi? Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with you, Ikigai!